Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on behalf of Derek Ball, Anthony Woolhams. Kira um, Fraser. Uh, Kira, I understand you're the Rangitiki candidate uh, here on behalf. Uh, I suppose you want to start with an apology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today's a, a day where um, it's auspicious for me to sit here in front of you as the candidate for Rangitiki. Uh, unfortunately, Derek Ball couldn't be with us as he's supporting our leader, who is still the Deputy Prime Minister up in Auckland. So he's asked me to fill in for him today. Thank you. Desperately trying to get that 2% up a bit. <laughs> as, as I'm sure you well know, and I'm sure everybody will know, uh, we're always wary of polls, mainly because uh, in 2017, the Colmar Brunton poll was up by 2.8% on the night of the election. So uh, never say die. And remember, we're the kingmakers and party vote New Zealand first. Um, I get, but this is an interesting point, because Derek has been here for one term, two terms? Two, two terms, um, as albeit a list candidate, but with an office in Palmerston North. Obviously, Ian Lee's gallery not standing again. There's the, the, the thought that maybe the, the doors have been thrown wide open and, and other people may get a shot at the electorate seat. Should Derek not be here fighting for that? Because that could also be a way in for New Zealand First if the 2% is accurate. The big thing about the coalition government and New Zealand First is uh, obviously was elected into and has worked with for three years is the amount of work that our MPs are doing in the background. A lot of the uh, New Zealand First MPs, like for example Derek Ball, Tracy Martin, Ron Mark, uh, Mark Patterson, all these people, a lot of people don't even know these who, who these people's names are. What it is is these guys are sitting in the background doing the mahi, getting on with the work. Huge amounts of the policies that have come through in the last three years and the bills that have been passed is because of New Zealand First in that engine room. So unfortunately, you know, uh, Derek unfortunately couldn't be here today and uh, I'm sure that uh, quite a few people still know who he is though. <laughs> well, I mean, there is a criticism that people don't see a lot of him in the electorate. I say again, and unfortunately, um, because of the work that Parliament uh, has for him, that's why we're all working together. And we're a smaller party, so we do our best on a shoestring sometimes. Uh, the coalition looked to go really well for the vast majority of the term, but in the past few months, there's been a lot of dissenting views starting to come out from the coalition, and mostly they seem to be coming from New Zealand First. <laughs> It's very interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, the, the thing with the coalition government is that in, in, when you're working together in democracy, you're not always going to get your way, and we always must work together to find the best way forward for New Zealanders. The other thing is that as we're heading towards into the uh, election process, uh, we are always entitled to our views, just as also our coalition partners are. And we, we hopefully also that we have such a good working relationship in the last three years for New Zealanders that we were able to express our own opinions, and actually, but again, I say again, find a, a compromise between that, do the best thing for New Zealanders and get forward. So we have sometimes disagree, but doesn't a family always disagree at times? Yes, but it's also, you're dancing a fine line, aren't you? Because you could also be demonstrating that the coalition is basically done and you won't be able to work together. Because it's pretty black and white with NZ First, whether the, the Labour-led coalition is doing something right or wrong. It's interesting because in the end, it really comes down to the people of New Zealand. Uh, so it depends, they put us back into Parliament, put us back in the engine room, we're the ones who keep them honest, we're the ones that keep the big parties going forward, we're the ones who are pragmatic about it, and we've got the experience for it. Do you sacrifice, um, not relevancy, but sort of allowing people to know what they're voting for in terms of your political leanings if you are actually, you know, as you say, the kingmaker and would jump from a a slightly more right-wing uh, uh, government to a slightly more left-wing government. Sorry, Fraser, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. You've got political views. Yes. You are on the political spectrum. Correct. You are either, you know, to the right or to the left or, or, or in the middle, but you, you, when you jump ship left and right... Well, actually, uh, to, to, I suppose the best way to answer that is New Zealand uh, First is a centrist party. We've always been the centrist party. Our objective is the best thing for New Zealanders, whichever way that actually plays out. So I don't think that we can necessarily sway left or right, per se, on a classical political scale, because we are so centrist and our, and our whole drive and our whole policy and our ethos and philosophy is to get the best for New Zealanders. Um, the Provincial Growth Fund was a bit of a New Zealand first win yes. uh, in the coalition talks. Um, Especially for Palmerston North. Indeed, uh, but it appears to have reached the end of its shelf life. You'd agree with that? 
No, I don't, because uh, in the future, I think it's going to be a very, very important part of legislation, whichever way New Zealand falls, in, uh, whichever way the election falls in the future. I think it's necessary to keep that momentum running. We were a coalition government, and with us in the engine room, we pushed forward and started to repair after the slash and burn of many, many years of other previous governments. That PGF has revitalised the provinces, revitalised the regions. Here we are sitting here. We know the, the, the transport hub, what's coming, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things that the PGF has done. This is a stepping stone. No, it's not going to come to a halt. Um, housing a huge issue in Palmerston North, as yes. we've said. Um, there was talk, Labour campaigned, I think, uh, for a capital gains tax. Uh, there was a working party that recommended one. Uh, New Zealand first vetoed that. Labour subsequently turned around and said they wouldn't do it. Do you think that's had an impact on the ability for people to get access to housing? I think that the problem is obviously uh, emergency housing and affordable housing, which is across the whole nation. People uh, have got very short memories that previous governments have actually, during the slash and burn policy, took away those, those houses, especially for lower socioeconomic uh, families. What's happening now, if you actually look around Palmerston North and the Manawa Two, is actually a housing boom, last time I looked. <laughs> there's, there's things actually moving forward. Uh, in relation to the capital gains tax, New Zealand has always been opposed to capital gains tax and always will, because it doesn't just affect housing, it affects every New Zealander. Jimmy, any quick questions from text? Uh, just a quick one. Someone wonders if New Zealand First has any regrets about being in government given after 2008 the party was out of parliament and after 1999 it was a much diminished force numbers wise. That's a good question. We never have regrets serving the people of New Zealand and finding the best way forward and the best way forward for all of us. Uh, into the quick fire round then, cannabis legalisation and control, yes and no? Very hard one, Un unprepared to say yes or no, okay, uh, unless, fair unless we're prepared to discuss it, but nope. obviously not. <laughs> uh, it's a referendum, so it's a yes sure, or no. Sure, fair enough. Uh, end of life choice? Again, personal choice, democratic, not prepared to say. Uh, and can you demonstrate any te reo or sign? Tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. Kia ora. Ketia Fanuano, or Ketia, what? My apologies. Ketia Wano, Mana Wenua, Otia Te Papioyo, Ranga Tike, and the Manawa Tu Wanganui, Core Anthony Willems. I hope. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Willems. Thank you.